Welcome to Review Central. This is DCAT Reviewer number 4, featuring questions for the DCAT Statistics and Probability subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the De La Salle College Admission Test or DCAT. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous DCATs. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Question number 1. An engineering student scored 75, 70, 85, 90, and 100 on the first five tests he took. After he took his sixth test, the average is now 85. What score did he get on the sixth test? A. 89 B. 90 C. 91 D. 92 E. 93 the correct answer is B, 90. Let X be the score on the sixth test. With the scores in the first five tests given, we can write the formula for the student's average for his six tests as, the quantity 75, plus 70, plus 85, plus 90, plus 100, plus X, over 6, equals 85. From here we should be able to easily compute for X, which is the student's score on his sixth test and arrive at 90 as the correct answer. Question number 2. Benedict has 7 polo shirts. 4 of those match with 3 of his pants while the remaining 3 match with 5 of his other pants. He also has 5 pairs of shoes that match all outfit combinations. How many outfit combinations can he try? A. 118 B. 135 C. 160 D. 209 E. 330 The correct answer is B. 135. We can show all the following combinations as follows. Therefore, the total combination is 60 plus 75 or 135. Question number 3. The school principal wants to test if it is true what teachers say that high school juniors use the computer an average of 3 hours a day. What could be the null and alternative hypotheses? A. Null hypothesis, the average is equal to 3 hours. Alternative hypothesis, the average is not equal to 3 hours. B. Null hypothesis, the average is equal to 3 hours. Alternative hypothesis, the average is greater than 3 hours. C. Null hypothesis, the average is equal to 3 hours. Alternative hypothesis, the average is less than 3 hours. D. Null hypothesis, the average is not equal to 3 hours. Alternative hypothesis, the average is equal to 3 hours. E. Null hypothesis, the average is not equal to 3 hours. Alternative hypothesis, the average is greater than 3 hours. The correct answer is A. The null hypothesis is the statement being tested. The alternative hypothesis is the statement often opposite of the null hypothesis. Therefore, the null hypothesis is, the average is equal to 3 hours. And the alternative hypothesis is, the average is not equal to 3 hours. Question number 4. Marjorie computed the standard deviation of 100 scores and she found it to be equal to 0.23. If two were added to each score, what would be the new standard deviation? A. 0.23 B. 2 C. 2.23 D. 3 E. None of these. The correct answer is A. The new standard deviation would be 0.23. Let's recall our standard deviation formula, as follows. Where x represents each individual score and x bar is the sample mean. 
If 2 were added to each score, expressed as x plus 2, then the mean will likewise increase by 2, expressed as x bar plus 2. Based on this, we can now rewrite the new standard deviation, as follows. Simplifying the equation, we'll end up with the following. Take note that this is the same as the original formula for standard deviation. Therefore, adding the same amount to all the values in a set of data will have no effect to the standard deviation. In other words, the new standard deviation will still be 0 0.23. Question number 5. Given the stem leaf plot distribution table with 10 scores, which of the following is true? 1. Mean equals 47. 2. Median equals 47. 3. Mode equals 47. Here are your answer choices. A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. 3 only. D. 1, 2, and 3. E. None of the above. The correct answer is D. 1, 2, and 3 are all true. First of all, what is a stem leaf plot? A stem and leaf plot is a simple kind of graph that is made out of the numbers themselves. It is a means of displaying the main features of a distribution. If a stem and leaf plot is turned on its side, it will resemble a bar graph or histogram and provide similar visual information. Going back to the question, from the given stem leaf distribution table, we can derive the actual scores to be 31, 32, 41, 47, 47, 47, 51, 55, 59, and 60. Now let's find the mean. The mean is simply the mathematical average of the numbers in the given set. Computing for the mean, we should arrive at 47 as the answer. Therefore, 1 is true. Next, let's find the median. The median is the middle value when a data set is ordered from least to greatest. Since there are 10 scores in our given data set, we can find the median by taking the average of the 5th and 6th scores. We should arrive at 47 as the median. Therefore, 2 is also true. Lastly, let's find the mode. The mode is the number that occurs most often in a given data set. In our data set, the number that occurs most often is 47, which occurs 3 times. Therefore, the mode is 47. Therefore, 3 is likewise true. And that is why the correct answer is D. 1, 2, and 3 are all true. Question number 6. Suppose a confidence interval for mu is found to be between 15.1 and 27.3. What would be the result of a hypothesis test of a null hypothesis of mu equals 25, against an alternative hypothesis of mu is not equal to 25? A. The alternative hypothesis should be accepted. B. The alternative hypothesis is not correct. C. The null hypothesis should be rejected. D. The null hypothesis would not be rejected. E. None of the above. The correct answer is D. The null hypothesis would not be rejected. Since the value of mu is inside the confidence interval, then the null hypothesis would not be rejected. Question number 7. A random sample of 8 commuters waiting for a bus in the morning, was asked about their waiting time before they can board a bus. Their waiting time, in minutes, had been recorded as follows. 5 12 15 15 20 25 30 and 60 What is the best point estimate of the true mean time of all commuters waiting for a bus? A. 19.85 B. 20.25 C. 21.50 D. 22.75 E. 23.85 The correct answer is D. 22.75 minutes. One of the fundamental principles of statistics is that, the larger the sample size, the more accurate the average values will be. Larger sample sizes also help researchers identify outliers in data and provide smaller margins of error. 
He now are giving a question, the best point estimate of the true mean time is the mean time of all the available sample data. In other words, we need to find the mean waiting time of all of the 8 random commuters sampled. Computing for the mean time, we should arrive at 22.75 minutes as the correct answer. Question number 8. Interpret the given linear regression equation, had it y is equal to 80,000 plus 5x. A. X is inversely proportional to had it y. B. As x increases, had it y increases. C. As x increases, had it y decreases. D. As x decreases, had it y increases. E. None of the above. The correct answer is B. As x increases had it y increases. The statistical term regression, and the hatted y or y with a circumflex symbol in the question, may easily scare many test takers. But if we ignore the term regression and read the equation as simply, y is equal to 80,000 plus 5x, we can see that this is just a basic algebra problem. And by a simple inspection of the given equation, we can quickly conclude that as x increases in value, the value of hatted y, or simply y, also increases. The mathematical and more conclusive way to establish this, is to determine if the slope of the line defined by the given equation is positive or negative. We can find the slope using the slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept. We can rewrite the given equation to match the slope-intercept form, as follows. y is equal to 5x plus 80,000. From here we can quickly find the slope to be 5 that is, positive 5 not negative 5. Since the slope of the line is positive, the relationship of the two variables is direct. That is, as x increases, y also increases. Question number 9. A correlation coefficient of 0.92 was found between time spent studying and score on an exam. What does this indicate about the strength of the relationship of the two variables assuming that they have a linear relationship? A. There is a strong and positive linear relationship between the two variables. B. There is a strong and negative linear relationship between the two variables. C. There is a weak and positive linear relationship between the two variables. D. There is a weak and negative linear relationship between the two variables. E. None of the above. The correct answer is A, there is a strong and positive linear relationship between the two variables. The correlation coefficient is a statistical measure of the strength of a linear relationship between two variables. Its values can range from minus 1 to 1. A correlation coefficient of minus 1 describes a perfect negative, weak, or inverse correlation, with values in one series rising as those in the other decline, and vice versa. A coefficient of 1 shows a perfect positive correlation, or a direct and strong relationship. A correlation coefficient of 0 means there is no linear relationship. 0.92 is positive and very close to 1. That means that the relationship between the two variables is direct, that is, strong, and positive. Question number 10. Suppose you want to know if there is a significant difference between the IQ of male and female in a certain city in Metro Manila. In the population, there is no significant difference. However, you found a significant difference in your sample so you rejected the null hypothesis. Which type of error did you possibly make? A. Standard error B. Margin of error C. Type 1 error D. Type 2 error E. No error was made The correct answer is C, type 1 error. In statistics, a type 1 error is a kind of fault that occurs during the hypothesis testing process when a null hypothesis is rejected, even though it is accurate and should not be rejected. In hypothesis testing, a null hypothesis is established before the onset of a test. In the given question, a true null hypothesis was rejected by concluding that there is a significant difference when, in fact, there is no significant difference. 
This means that a type 1 error was committed. You have just completed DCAT reviewer number 4, which featured questions for the DCAT statistics and probability subtest. If you wish to watch more DCAT reviewers for the DCAT statistics and probability subtest, check out our DCAT statistics and probability reviewers playlist. Check out also our other DCAT playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central, and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming DCAT, and we look forward to your exciting days as a Lazalian. Animal LaSalle.